O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. You yourself will secure my portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You stand at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory. Grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life, so as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have among yourselves the same attitude that is also yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear me. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts be every, ever merry. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before him. For dominion is the Lord's, and he rules the nations. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. He replied to him, a man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servants to say to those invited, Come, 
everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported this to his master. Then the master of the house in a rage commanded his servants, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, sir, your orders have been carried out and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, go out to the highways and hedgerows and make people come in that, may, that my home may be filled. For I tell you, None of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. The Gospel of the Lord. In the 17th century, down in Lima, Peru, there was a lot of slave trading going on as the New World was being discovered down there in the southern part of the, the continent of South America. And the Spanish were not being very nice, that was for sure to a lot of the people. One of the Spanish soldiers had a mistress who was a free slave and they had a child together. And then this soldier just kind of abandoned uh, this woman and her son, his son. That boy, Martin, would grow up in a culture where he was very much um, made fun of because he was half white and half black. He's been a child of slavery and rights were denied him because of his descendancy, particularly even being abandoned by his father. But his mother was a devout woman. She had come to the Catholic faith and taught her son faith. Particularly, she taught her son to embrace the humility of God, that the greatest way to fight the racism that he was enduring was to enter into the humility of Jesus Christ. And so he did. In St. Paul's letter today, St. Paul says, have among yourselves the same attitude that is yours in Christ Jesus. The attitude of Christ Jesus that even though he was God, he did not deem equality with God. In other words, he humbled himself. He became one of us. He even became a slave to us. Getting on his hands and knees and washing the feet of the disciples, something only a slave would do, not even a servant. Jesus remains, we could say, in one sense, enslaved to humanity. And that when we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and I say those words as priest, this is my body, this is the chalice of my blood, in that command, Christ, comes to us on the altar and remains imprisoned for us in the beauty of the tabernacle where we can always pray before him. The attitude of Christ, the attitude of humility that God should so humble himself even to take the little form of bread so that we could receive him fully, completely, body, blood, soul, and divinity so that we could be united with him and be one with him. And so it's that attitude, that humility that St. Paul says have that same attitude of Christ, that humble attitude. Martin was formed with this humble attitude and so many things were denied him. Education, even entering religious life. He wanted to become a brother in religious life, but the law was that if you were a half-breed, you could not. It wasn't the church law, it was the civil law that was making these rules for religion. And so Martin learned the trade of being a barber <laughs> and, uh, and physician. I don't know how that works, but for somehow the local barber was also the local physician. So I guess you go to get your hair cut and get a bloodletting. I don't know how that worked. But anyway, he was trained in both as, uh, as an apprentice. But then he pleaded with the Dominicans to please allow him to at least be a member of the third order, and they did. 
And he was so humble in his task and taking care of the brothers, taking care of the house, cooking in the kitchen, that eventually the superior said, the heck with the law, Martin's going to become a brother. And so Martin entered religious life, made his vows as a religious brother. So many stories of Martin's miracles, of whether it be in ecstasy or by location, or uh, the mice in the kitchen, which he uh, oftentimes fed until the brothers got upset, and then he led them outside and took care of them so they wouldn't get killed. <laughs> so little stories like this with Martin in his gentleness and his humility. Uh, and when the, the epidemic hit his time in his city, he didn't cower and hide from the epidemic, from the pandemic of his day. He ran out to care for the sick. I said this the other day in a homily, I haven't gotten in trouble for it yet, but I'll say it again. This is the first time in history when a pandemic hits and priests run and hide in rectories. That never happened in the past. In the past, we opened the doors of the church, took people in, and took care of them. That's what we did. I don't know what's going on today. This isn't, this isn't what we did in the past. Martin was one of those brothers who said, I'm going out to care for the poor. And he cared for the sick. He cared for those who were struck by the pandemic of his day, which was far more deadly than our own today. You know, Martin was really a man of true justice and he could not stand slavery. Of course, he would see his own people being enslaved. And one day to free a slave, he actually sold himself to free a slave. And then the superior went to the slave owner and said, he couldn't do that, he's a religious vows, he can't sell himself into slavery. And actually had to buy Martin back, <laughs> you know, so, but he did it to save somebody else's life. He had that same attitude of Christ, who was sold into the slavery by Judas Iscariot with 30 pieces of silver, fulfilling the prophecy, I was sold for the price of a slave. He had that same attitude of Christ, willing to give his life for the freedom of another, just as Christ gave his life for our freedom from sin and death. He's a beautiful, beautiful saint who died in his late 60s after a long, holy life of humility and following after that beautiful example of Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, let us invite St. Martin into our lives to instruct us, to teach us the ways of humility, that we might truly know how to put on that attitude of Christ, that we might have that true love within us, that we may truly serve one another. And on this election day, we ask his powerful intercession also for our country, that our country may truly understand the seriousness of the situation we're presently in, that we may turn to elect leaders this day who will protect the unborn, who will truly have the attitude of Christ and seek true justice that will protect religious liberty, will protect the freedoms that we have come to enjoy. May St. Martin this day intercede for us individually, intercede for our country, and that through his powerful intercession, we might know the humility of Christ. May God bless you and Mary keep you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create in blessed Martin de Porres, the new man in your image, the old having passed away. Graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, we toll is peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, we toll is peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, Tamundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The Lord is my portion. He is good to the soul that seeks him. Let us pray. By the power of the sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love, through the example of the blessed Father, and bring to fulfillment the good works you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Thank you all for attending Mass this day to pray for our country. Adoration will be going on from this moment until 8.30 tonight. At 8.30 there'll be benediction. Come and pray throughout the day. And if you set up for an hour, if you can't set up, come and pray anyway. <laughs> and uh, if you come back for benediction at 8.30, that'd be wonderful. Just for the 10 minutes benediction. Receive the blessing of our Lord, but we'll also be blessing our entire country at that time. So but please, please, please pray today for peace for our country and that we have the wisdom to elect leaders who will protect, particularly protect the unborn. Please lead. What's up?
pleading on behalf of our nation. For over 40 years now, our country has legalized the killing of unborn children. So many babies have died, so many mothers' lives destroyed, so many fathers, their fathers were ripped from them. We ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, to stand upon this precipice of the, our nation, of whether or not we shall return to truly be a culture of life and culture of death, that you may send forth the Holy Spirit upon us, that we might choose life, choose the blessing, choose the one who will lead us ever closer to you and restore our country to the faith it once had. We ask you, Lord Jesus Christ, that in this time of peril, to grant peace to our nation, that we may be protected, and that we, our country, may lead the way and lead the world into the respect and the reverence and the dignity of human life from conception to natural death. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the 